flat training solutions. Here's another weather video taken in part from our knowledge test prep and in part from our check right prep software. This time we're going to go over the weather depiction chart. This chart is something you will need to become familiar with as there are plenty of questions on the various written tests and most important it's a very good way to look at existing conditions and whether it's a good idea to go fly or not. As I said this is a look at existing conditions. It is not a forecast, so it will not tell you what's going to happen in the future. This is important for a couple of reasons. First, it helps you eliminate wrong answers on the various tests, as one or both of the wrong answers will say that this chart will provide a way to figure out what will happen in the future, either by calling it a forecast or saying it indicates the weather trends. Trends is what's going to happen in the future again, leaving you with the only correct answer which calls this chart an observation, which is exactly what it is. Second, as I mentioned, it is a really quick way to find areas of weather to either avoid if you're planning a VFR flight or maybe some good IFR weather to train in actual conditions. Now let's get to the chart. The first thing you need to know is that the legend at the bottom right corner, which is always there, will give you some good information especially for the test questions again, as it will tell you what the contour signify and also give you the definition of VFR, marginal VFR and IFR, which could appear in other questions that have nothing to do with this chart. But the chart is available during the test in the supplement box, so you can always refer to it to figure out what the definitions are. As you can see from the legend, no contour indicates VFR or ceilings greater than 3000 feet and or visibilities greater than 5 miles. One contour with no shading signifies marginal VFR or ceilings between 1 and 3000 feet and visibilities between 3 and 5 miles. A shaded contour inside a clear one signifies IFR conditions, ceilings less than 1000 feet and visibilities less than 3 miles. The chart also shows frontal activity. Whether it's a cold front, like the one extending from the north central part of the US all the way to northern California, warm fronts, etc. Now, the other information is a little more complicated and has to do with the reporting stations themselves, which are shown as little circles. For example, if we look at this symbol here, we can see some numbers and some symbols. They signify the visibility and ceiling and the reason for these visibilities and ceilings. In this case, visibility is due to fog, as shown by the three lines on the side of the circle, and the sky is obscured, as shown by the X inside the circle. Now, the easiest way to remember which is a visibility and which is a ceiling is to put yourself next to the ball and under the ball. If you're under the circle looking up at it, then that number over your head must be a ceiling. It's over your head. And when you're next to the symbol, that is a horizontal distance you can see, or a visibility. Now let's go over the symbols themselves. First, we will cover the ones inside the circles, the cloud height symbols, and then we will move to the ones on the side, the visibility symbols. First of all, remember that the numbers shown on all weather charts are always missing two zeros, so you always need to add two zeros to the elevation, meaning a two under a ball signifies 200 feet, while a 20, 2000 feet. An empty circle signifies clear skies, or zero eighths of coverage. A quarter of a ball filled in black signifies a few clouds, or one to two eighths coverage. A circle with a quarter filled and a black line stretching down signifies a scattered layer of clouds, or three to four eighths coverage. If three quarters of the ball are filled in in black, this means the sky is broken, 5 to 7 eighths coverage, which, by the way, is the first actual indication of a ceiling. What do I mean by this? Well, if the ball shows a quarter filled circle with 200 feet, that would mean few clouds at 200 feet, and that is not considered IFR, because few is not a ceiling, while a three quarter filled circle with a 200 would definitely make the station IFR. A filled circle with a white line down the middle is an overcast layer with a few breaks or 8 eighths coverage. A completely filled circle with no line means just completely overcast and then again would be 8 eighths coverage. 
As we saw before, an X inside the circle signifies the sky is obscured by some phenomenon, such as smoke, and by the way, this is also considered a ceiling. And finally, an M inside the circle means that the person reporting at the station was on a smoke break, or maybe needed a number two, <laughs> if you know what I mean. The station report is missing. Also, if there is a bracket next to the station, it signifies that that station is automated. And by the way, this is a test question on both the private and instrument knowledge test. A bracket means automated station. Now, for the visibility symbols. Two lines next to a station means mist. And three lines looks like banks of fog, and indeed it is. And a sleeping eight, an eight on its side, also known as an infinite symbol, stands for haze. A squiggly symbol that looks kind of like a mountain means smoke. Two fat commas signify drizzle, while two balls, rain. An S on its side stands for freezing conditions. So if there's a fat comma, then that's freezing drizzle. The comma was drizzle, the S means freezing, freezing drizzle. While a dot means freezing rain. An empty triangle with a ball inside of it stands for ice pallets. And the next symbol is fairly obvious. It looks like a flake. And sure enough, it stands for snow. A triangle facing down means showers. If there was a ball on top of it, it would mean rain showers. A flake, snow showers. And finally, an R-looking symbol with a triangle at the end of it, well, it looks like a lightning strike, doesn't it? Sure enough, it means thunderstorms. As you can see, there are many symbols to remember on this chart. And the reality of it is, you don't necessarily need to know them all. The more you can remember, the better, obviously. But many of them can be given sense to, especially in important ones such as snow, thunderstorms, or fog. The written test really has no actual questions on the symbols. All the questions ask of what value the chart is, or why is the weather VFR, IFR, marginal VFR? And the answers do not mention the why of it, fog, haze, etc., but rather the what. Is it IFR because of ceiling, because of visibility, or both? As long as you again remember where the ceiling is displayed and where the visibility is shown, you will have no problems on the test. Doing the check ride, very few examiners will want you to know all the symbols of the chart. And again, as long as you're able to recognize the main ones and tell them whether it would be a good idea or not to go fly, you will be fine. But what about using it for actual planning? Well, as I said, it's a very useful tool, but again, there is no reason to actually know all the symbols. While planning, just use a legend to decipher the symbols. You can find it online, and we also put one in the description below. So click on the link on the description, and you'll be brought to the legend, which you can print out and have next to you anytime you look at it. Remember that if you want a real detailed explanation of the weather, both basic meteorology as well as weather services, consider purchasing our software. Two full chapters are dedicated to explaining the weather with clear attention to detail and our usual simple and fun explanations to change your point of view on the weather and give you a positive attitude on this underappreciated subject. Knowing to read the weather well can really make the difference between being a safe pilot or not. If you're always putting your life in somebody else's hands by having somebody else check the weather for you, it might not be such a good idea. If he makes a mistake, you'll pay for the consequences. So it wouldn't hurt for you to know the weather well. Until next time, happy flying and clear skies to everyone from Pilot Training Solutions.